Welcome to the Blood Pressure Self-Monitoring Program Nutrition Education Seminar number three, covering shopping, preparing, and cooking food for better blood pressure management. These nutrition seminars address various ways of eating that we want to be mindful of to stay healthy and effectively manage blood pressure. Please be sure to write down any questions that come up during this nutrition seminar. An overview for this seminar includes nutrition and blood pressure facts, food labels and shopping for blood pressure friendly foods, how to prepare and cook food for better blood pressure management, salts, herbs, and spices. Let's start with nutrition and blood pressure. Nutrition choices have a direct impact on blood pressure and taking steps to eat a healthy diet can provide long-term benefits to your health and your heart. It's recommended that you eat a variety of foods from all the food groups, which includes fruits and veggies, whole grains, low-fat dairy products, poultry, fish, lean meats, and nuts. Look for the American Heart Association heart check mark to see if the foods you are eating meet the American Heart Association criteria for saturated fat, trans fat, sodium, cholesterol, and important nutrients. Ask yourself, how are you doing eating a variety of foods from all food groups? What are some changes you might need to make? Take a minute to pause on this slide to answer these questions. You may share with your Healthy Heart Ambassador at your next scheduled appointment. The foods we choose can have a big impact on the amount of sodium we consume. Here are the common sources of dietary sodium found in the food supply in the American diet. Only 11% of the salt in our food comes from what we add. The gray and yellow slices represent the 11%. 77% of the salt we consume is added to food during processing. This makes it difficult for individuals to reduce salt intake on their own if they consume a high amount of processed foods. This is represented by the blue portion of the pie chart. And the other 12% occurs naturally in food, represented by the orange slice. The average sodium intake for an American is 3,400 milligrams per day. However, sodium intake should stay between 1,500 to 2,400 milligrams per day. So virtually all Americans consume too much sodium. Ask yourself, what are some strategies you might want to keep in mind as you think about planning, shopping, and cooking meals. Pause this recording to write down your strategies. That's right. Planning ahead, making a list, eating fewer processed foods, and looking for the American Heart Association Heart check mark would be great strategies. Now let's look at shopping for blood pressure friendly foods. 
Planning meals and making a list can help prevent you from straying from the list. Do not shop on an empty stomach. If you eat before you shop, you will be less likely to buy higher fat and higher sodium foods. Buy fresh. Fresh foods contain more vitamins, minerals, and fiber than their packaged counterparts. If you buy convenience foods, make sure they are low fat, low sodium option. Shop around the perimeter of the store. Sticking to the perimeter of the store where you'll find fresh fruits and vegetables, low fat dairy and lean meats. The center aisles offer a lot of processed, high sodium, high fat packaged foods. Aim to buy fresh, plain frozen or canned with no salt added vegetables and try to buy fresh poultry, fish and lean meat rather than canned or processed types. Choose convenience foods that are low in sodium. Cut back on frozen dinners, pizza, packaged mixes, canned soups, or broths, and salad dressing. These often have a lot of sodium. Choose ready-to-eat breakfast cereals that are low in sodium. Many ready-to-eat cereals have a lot of sodium in them, so be mindful. Now ask yourself, what do you think about these strategies? Which ones would be most helpful for you to use? Pause to write down your thoughts. This slide has a chart that contains two columns. The first column shares example of foods to choose more often, and the second column shares examples of foods to choose less often. Let's review the chart. Choose more often grilled or baked chicken and turkey with skin removed, and choose less often smoked and cured meats such as bacon, ham, sausage, hot dogs, bologna, fatback, ham hocks, scrapple, and liver pudding. Choose more often fresh fish or rinsed canned fish such as tuna or sardines. Choose less often canned fish. Choose more often low sodium canned foods and choose less often canned foods packed in broth or salt. Choose more often low sodium or reduced sodium cheeses and choose less often most cheeses. Choose more often low salt or salt-free chips, nuts, and pretzels and choose less often salty chips, crackers, nuts, popcorn, and pretzels. Choose more often plain rice, noodles, or pasta, and choose less often quick cooking rice and noodles. Choose more often homemade, low sodium, or reduced sodium soups, and choose less often regular canned and instant soups. Choose more often fresh, frozen, no salt added, or rinsed canned vegetables, and choose less often canned vegetables. Choose more often spices, herbs, and flavorings, such as cilantro, parsley, garlic powder, onion powder, vinegar, and chili powder. And choose less often condiments and seasonings such as soy sauce, monosodium glutamate, also known as MSG, fish sauce, bouillon cubes, ketchup, and Cajun seasonings.
now ask yourself, how do you feel about making some of these changes? You may pause to write down your thoughts. Americans eat 30% more packaged food than fresh food and consume more packaged food than individuals living in nearly all other countries. It's important to read the food label and determine the sodium content of food, which can vary by several hundreds of milligrams in similar foods. For example, the sodium content in regular tomato soup may be 700 milligrams per cup in one brand and 1,100 milligrams per cup in another brand. Reading labels, comparing sodium contents of foods, and then purchasing the lower sodium brand may be one strategy to lower sodium intake. Also, watch for foods that have high levels of saturated or trans fat or that include hydrogenated fat. These can all raise your cholesterol. Watch for foods high in sodium. These can increase blood pressure. On average, the higher your salt intake, the higher your blood pressure. It's important to understand different statements and claims on labels in order to have a clear understanding of what you are buying. Free examples include cholesterol-free, fat-free, dairy-free. If you are looking to avoid a certain dietary element, then free is the best choice. Very low and low examples include very low sodium, low fat, low cholesterol. Very low and low may be helpful if you are looking to reduce a certain element. Reduced or less examples include reduced carbs, less sugar, reduced fat. These terms mean the food has 25% less of that nutrient than the reference or standard version of that food. So if you see reduced sugar, peanut butter, it means this version has at least 25% less sugar than its standard counterpart. It's still a good idea to check the food label to see exactly how much of each component, fat, sodium, cholesterol, sugar, etc., is in the product. Let's review some components of the nutrition facts label. Amounts per serving. Nutrient amounts are provided for one serving. If you eat more or less than a serving, add or subtract amounts. For example, if you eat one cup of peas, you need to double the nutrient amounts on the label. Number of servings. There may be more than one serving in the package, so be sure to check serving size. Nutrients. The different nutrients found in this particular food. Here, you'll find the milligrams of sodium in one serving. Percent daily value. Percent daily value helps you compare products and tells you if the food is high or low in sodium. Choose products with the lowest percent daily value for sodium. Become a detective and use food labels as your clues. They help you become savvy about your food choices. Okay, what do you notice when you compare these two labels? Go ahead and pause to review.
That's right. Frozen peas have lower sodium than canned peas. Canned peas have three times more sodium. Look at these two food labels and compare. Which cereal is a heart healthier choice? What makes it the healthier choice? Pause to take a minute to review. Yes, great observations. It's the mixed berry cereal because of less calories, sodium and sugar and more protein, potassium, vitamins and minerals. The protein and fiber keep you full longer and potassium, a mineral that is important for reducing blood pressure. We have completed the shopping for blood pressure friendly foods. Now we will look at food preparation for better blood pressure management. Once you've shopped for your food, it's time to think about how you prepare it. There are many ways you can prepare healthy foods that's low in sodium without losing any flavor. Flavor your foods with salt-free seasoning blends such as Dash Blend or McCormick Perfect Pinch Salt-Free Seasoning, or fresh or dried herbs and spices, or fresh lemon and lime juice. Cook rice, pasta, and hot cereal without salt. Rinse canned foods such as tuna and beans to remove some sodium. Remove the salt shaker from the prep area and dinner table. Many herbs and spices are very versatile, so you can use them in many different dishes. How can we use herbs and spices in foods we eat every day? We have a chart here with tips for using herbs and spices. On the left-hand column, you have the different herbs and spices, and in the right-hand column, ways to use them. So basil can be used in soups and salads, vegetables, fish, and meats. Cinnamon, used in salads, vegetables, breads, and snacks. Chili powder, used in soups, salads, vegetables, and fish. Cloves, used in soups, salads, and vegetables. Dill weed and dill seed, used in fish, soups, salads, and vegetables. Ginger, used in soups, salads, vegetables, and meats. Marjoram, Use in soups, salads, vegetables, beef, fish, and chicken. Nutmeg. Use in vegetables, meats, and snacks. Oregano. Use in soups, salads, vegetables, meats, and snacks. Parsley. Use in salads, vegetables, fish, and meats. Rosemary. Use in salads, vegetables, fish, and meats, sage, use in soups, salads, vegetables, meats, and chicken. And finally, thyme, use in salads, vegetables, fish, and chicken. Pause to think for a moment. Have you used any of these or other herbs or spices in a dish recently? If so, what was the dish?
What are some other things you can do at home to reduce your sodium intake? Substitute butter and oil with water or low sodium broths for sauteing. If you do not want to add any sodium at all, use a little bit of healthy oil to saute instead of the broth. Use lower fat substitutions in recipes. Use reduced fat in low sodium condiments when available. Substitute mayonnaise or sour cream with Greek yogurt or cottage cheese. Substitute fatty meats with beans and other veggies in recipes. Don't be afraid to modify your recipes if they all call for a lot of fat and salt. Make substitutions and experiment with herbs and spices to create something new. Here are some cooking tools that may be helpful for you. Non-stick co cookware allows you to cook with less or without adding butter or other added fats that may be higher in calories and saturated fat. Vegetable steamer inserts allows you to cook vegetables without adding fat. Steaming vegetables help retain the vitamins and minerals. Having a spice turntable and or a garlic press may make it easier to prepare foods with spices and herbs. Let's practice some of the new strategies you've learned by making over a recipe with this next activity. The recipe makeover for taco pizza. Here are the activity instructions. You are going to create a healthier, dash-friendly version of the taco pizza. What are some modifications that can be made? Try to identify at least five changes that you can make. Pause to write down your swaps, then move to the next slide to review some possible modifications. On this slide, you will find on the left-hand column the original recipe and in the right-hand column, the modified recipe. So let's take a look at the swaps. Swapped ground turkey for the ground beef. Look for reduced sodium taco seasoning mix or use only half the packet of seasoning. Swap regular croissant rolls for the reduced fat version. Swap can refried beans for homemade or lower sodium versions. Swap regular shredded cheddar cheese for a reduced fat version. For the olives, you may drain and rinse to reduce the amount of sodium. You may also always increase the tomatoes and onions. Now let's take a few minutes to consider the questions on the next slide.
please consider using these questions to help guide some small changes that may help reduce your sodium intake and blood pressure. Think about how you currently prepare to shop for food. Do you plan meals for the week ahead of time? Do you make a grocery item list? What items can you substitute to make choices more blood pressure friendly? Salt versus herbs and spices. Salted versus unsalted foods and snacks. Reduced sodium. Canned versus frozen. Think about how you currently prepare your food at home. Do you use fresh ingredients? What blood pressure friendly techniques would you consider using moving forward? What are some of your favorite recipes? Which ingredients may contribute to higher blood pressure? How can the recipe be modified to be more blood pressure friendly? You may pause to write down your answers. Now let's discuss physical activity and blood pressure management. Physical activity and blood pressure management. Evidence has shown that regular physical activity can lead to a significant reduction in blood pressure and improve other cardiovascular risks. Moderate physical activity has also been proven to decrease blood pressure in hypertensive patients who are less responsive to medical treatment. 30 minutes of physical activity a day that's equivalent to a brisk walk, six to seven days each week, roughly 180 minutes each week, may result in better management or a reduction in one's blood pressure. A brisk walk is faster than a stroll, which you can still talk but not sing. Take a minute to pause and write down your thoughts to what are some ways you can add physical activity to your day? This slide provides physical activity and blood pressure management resources used. These are the resources used to support the evidence on the previous slide. Please share your takeaways from this session and changes you will make in your shopping, preparing, and cooking of food with your Healthy Heart Ambassador at your next follow-up appointment. Please review the How Do I Modify Recipes and Low Sodium Foods Shopping List handouts provided via email. Don't forget to self-monitor and track your blood pressure at home and attend your next follow-up appointment. A Healthy Heart Ambassador is there to help you practice self-measuring and to answer your questions. 
Thank you for attending the Blood Pressure Self-Monitoring Nutrition Education Seminar on Shopping, Preparing, and Cooking Food for Better Blood Pressure Management. That concludes this Blood Pressure Self-Monitoring Nutrition Education Seminar. Thank you.